Back in 2019, Shane Gillis was just another bold, quick-witted comedian on the rise. But no one knew that within five years, he'd shake up the comedy scene so hard that his name would be remembered forever. He was just announced as one of the new cast members of SNL, but then he got hit with devastating news. A Saturday Night Live shakeup, the show firing one of its new cast members before he even appeared on the broadcast. After many years of climbing through the ranks of comedy, Shane was denied a chance to perform on the biggest comedic stage there is when SNL removed him from their cast list and it hit him deep. So I was having like nightmares about like oh. articles and comments and all that shit. It was crazy. For many, this would have been the end of a promising career, but Shane did not quit here. He rebounded from the cancellation to reshape the way comedians can navigate the negative spotlight and made his name even more popular than it was before. This video will show you how a few tactical moves put Shane amongst the goats and changed comedy forever. Shane's SNL firing came after a resurfaced podcast clip of his containing racial slurs was found by the SNL members. This put Shane in the spotlight, but since it was 2019, he was still unknown. And did you know this wasn't the first time Shane has been fired for his jokes? Back when Shane was only performing in Philadelphia, he actually got banned from performing at the Good Good Comedy Theater. They claimed it was due to his history of making racist, sexist, and homophobic jokes on stage. And for someone as early in their career as Shane was, this would have been a major setback. However, fortunately for Shane, he got the support of the attendees. When the Good Good Comedy Theater tried to make a post about firing Shane on X, they were met by a heap of Shane's fans. One X user called them out and said, Hey, remember when you booked Owen Benjamin? And another said, You guys suck. Shane always avoided talking shit about Good Good and this is how you act. So even with this firing, Shane would have left with the confidence that fans do enjoy his style regardless of who it offends, and I'm sure this has stuck with him throughout his career. But despite all of this controversy, Shane didn't gain much popularity from it until his Joe Rogan appearance, which was two years later. So what was he doing in between? Well, immediately after the firing, he released an apology statement that started with I'm a comedian that pushes boundaries, which was a sign of things to come. He then gave it a few months to let the public eye shift focus, and then got back to performing where he began to notice a difference in the crowds. I noticed positives immediately. Did you really? Yeah, for sure. Like, you go on stage and people are like, oh, shit, this is, you know. This is who this is. This is a guy. Oh, wow. So you went I from never had, I had zero. And then to like, oh, this guy's good. Shane had become more recognizable, and he understood that controversy brought visibility. He then made an appearance on Barstool's Answer the Internet show and made sure to mingle with the controversy surrounding his name. If you were murdered, who would be the most likely suspect? We got a lot of them now. Um, I got about 1.4 billion suspects. <laughs> However, as his performances were getting better, COVID lockdowns came and stopped all live shows. But rather than shying away from the spotlight and becoming unknown again, Shane leaned into it. The press did say that we called Southern soldiers so gay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? He decided to start uploading the Matt and Shane Secret podcast on YouTube, which is the same podcast that got him fired. It was quite smart because when he was getting cancelled, the podcast's name was getting mentioned a lot, so by putting it on YouTube, some people would have recognized the podcast and been intrigued. Okay, this is where I scope the girls. I stare at all the girls, dude. <laughs> you see some girls. Yes, dude. They're down in the pool. Oh, the pool. no. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those hotels uh, that on, like, pornos. Wow, there actually are some down there. I might go down there and drink a couple cold ones. Could you, could you zoom so, your webcam? What's up, guys? His weekly uploads during lockdown allowed fans to appreciate his unique personality and see that he was a funny guy offstage, too. Shane even used the negative spotlight around John McAfee as he was getting canceled and brought him on as a guest. I'm John McAfee. I'm the world's greatest hacker. I also would not have been able to build the world's largest anti-hacking company, could I? Um, no, no. Listen, we'll talk about it later. Okay, so let's move on. Nah, right, Nor Norton's that Sorry. Norton's the shit in terms of antivirus. Yeah, well, we're both big. We're big Norton guys. <laughs> Well, fuck you both. <laughs> <laughs> the first few months of lockdown grew his podcast very rapidly, as it gave fans a chance to resonate with his unfiltered personality. But what he did next was even smarter. Hello, I'm Bob Isis of Isis Toyota, and we have a great collection of pre-owned certified Toyotas. But there's one thing I want to make very clear. 
and it's that we have nothing to do with the terrorists over there in the Middle East right now. And that's why we are the good ISIS. Once lockdown restrictions were lifted, he launched the Gillian Keeves skits show as he was beginning to make a name for himself. This gave his fans a new way to enjoy his comedy. Now, with Shane gaining some popularity, he decided he would continue to upload his podcast and make even more skits. Most of the conspiracy secret society, I know I just got red pilled and this is counter, counter, you know, into it, yeah, whatever, fuck words. Yeah. The, most of these guys are words. Alex Jones is brilliant. Alex Jones is clearly brilliant. Let's ride. Don't give up on me, you fat fucking piece of shit. <laughs> just let everything go. Become one with the bike. Faster, faster, faster. Keep going. Keep going. Still have 22 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, God damn it! He was beginning to be known as the guy SNL fired, who was actually quite funny and he was enjoying it. Whenever he appeared online, he would always play around with the topic that got him canceled. Shane, if you had to choose one cartoon animal to have sex with, who would it be? <laughs> well, obviously, old Lola Bunny. That's the easy yeah, one. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the easy Bunny. one. A lot of people go with that. Damn, those titties were big. Ooh. I forgot about Jasmine. <sighs> no, Princess we're going cartoon Jasmine. animal. That's a human. That was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right, we're done. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Fuck! God damn it. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> this is not the month to say that answer. <laughs> Why? It's Asian. Don't hate Asian. No, it's <laughs> not those types of Asians. Yeah. Moments like these brought Shane into the spotlight again, and in a very smart way, he seized the moment to increase his reach on social media. Oh, hold your horses! Hold your horses for a second. Doesn't anybody fucking knock anything? What the fuck are you doing, guys? Sarah, this is my job. This is my job. This is my job. I lost my job, and this is how I'm providing for you. You have an OnlyFans? Yeah. Turns out. You can make a lot of money doing this. So are you trying to tell me you couldn't get a job, so now you're just a slut? No! Not a slut. I'm not a slut. Oh, thank you, African Rose. This is live right now? This is live. We're live. Fuck, man. Uh, he started posting to Twitter, which is now known as X, to promote his Gillian Keeves skits show and expand his fan base. But when he made a surprise appearance on this next podcast, his fame exploded. Kurt's like one of my, he's one of my favorite comedians. But the shit right? you're doing is right up there with that. It's Thank you. really fucking Thank funny, you. man. It's really funny and it's like something you would never be able to do on SNL. Shane's JRE appearance served as the perfect boost to his career and of course, it gave us this viral clip. If I get fired here, whatever, I'll just go do Joe Rogan next week and I'll be fine. Anyway, I thought that was funny. No? What? I was like, oh, I Is literally that what you thought. I literally thought that. It was now two years after Shane got fired from SNL, but he was still leaning into it. Throughout the podcast, he discussed the firing process with Joe and explained how he managed to reestablish his name after it. Joe then went on to praise his Gillian Keeves skits, which acted as the perfect advert for his next great move. I actually, personally, I actually volunteered and coached with the Special Olympics for a little while, so, you know, what'd you guys do? <laughs> no, don't clap. Please. I did it for those kids. <laughs> no, I'm mean, getting it. Shane posted his first comedy special two months after his JRE appearance. Now this was perfect timing, because his JRE boost was still active, and this made his Gillian Keeves sketches even more popular. Do me a favor, could you take your gigantic perfect tits and leave? I don't recall saying I would get a date here, but if I did say that, maybe I will. With Shane now being in the spotlight for a good reason, he was getting invited onto a new podcast each week, and even more people were connecting with his true personality and character offstage. My name's Joe, and I'm a big fan from little old England. Enjoy oh. my bath. And I have a question for Shane. Um, what is his opinion on age gap relationships? Um, still seems to be okay for the younger woman and the older guy, but not so much the other way around. So, um, look forward to hearing your opinions. Okay, bye. Wow. That could be one of, that's somebody's school teacher. She's in the bathtub. Is that British ASMR in a bathtub? <laughs> yeah, She's asking me about what, how do I feel about older women? Yeah. What, do you bring me down here to make me come, dude? 
No. Are you trying uh, to get me hard? Was this a setup? No, I would never this do anything like that. This is a setup. Huh? No, I've never. You invite me over here, you put on some ASMR, give me fucking rock hard, give me some water. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> what are you dude. doing? <laughs> Can you make me jerk off on this podcast? <laughs> Shane then became a regular on JRE, as he was now a member of the Protect Our Park series that showed a great side to him. But losing oh to you in a drinking God. challenge, I think he, for whatever del weird delusion, he thought, thought through sheer will he could power down enough Bud Lights to keep up with you. Plus weed, plus some whiskey, yeah, he's but it's fucked. Very little whiskey, but look at how calm Shane is. This is the most shocking thing about all of it. It puts it in perspective as he cracks open a new one. <laughs> he can still talk. Shane, what do you think we should do about Ukraine? I, I, you know what? <laughs> I think we should keep sending them billions and billions of dollars. Back in his first appearance, Joe actually praised his Trump impressions, and this helped establish his name in comedy, as he was now getting recognized and approved by some of the goats. Donald Trump would be the funniest one to see get shot. It's because he'd be in the middle of a speech talking shit. You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> the shooter would be coming out and be like, sit down, get down. <laughs> what a loser, get down, sit down. <laughs> but just the noise he would make when he got hit. Even if you love Donald Trump, it would be funny. As soon as he got hit, he'd be like, eh. <laughs> Shane was now respected in the comedy scene, and in September 2023, he moved to Austin to be close to the up-and-coming comedy environment. This move initially put Shane on edge, but he had one thing in mind. You know, do Rogan's podcast, do podcasts down here, do comedy. So yeah. I've been down here enough, so I wasn't worried about, like, living here. I was worried about uh, comics being like, ah, oh, pussy. He left New York. He's trying oh, to fucking really? suck Rogan's dick. That, that was like, I was like, that's gonna happen. I know that. Mm -hmm. Uh... No, I was excited. Matt was excited about it, so I knew I had Matt coming down with me. And then we brought our other friends, and it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh... and ta taxes are oh yeah, big buck New York, dude. But no, I just wanted to move to a place where you could do stand up during the week. And yeah. forever, it was just New York and LA. That's now, true. You, now you can do it in Nashville and Austin. Yeah. Like even just going over to um, the mothership, it's like you can do three sets in a night, probably. Yeah. Yeah, you can do, you can do four every single time. There's wow. usually two shows in the small room, two in the wow. main room. I mean, that's you do crazy. four sets a night. Yeah, it's safe to say Shane has mastered the art of making great career moves. He carved out his own path to success in comedy despite major setbacks. Shane is a winner, and he is very aware that all the opportunities he keeps seizing won't last forever. Think about moving back from here. You think you're settled in? You're good? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I'll live here forever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? That's just a big. I don't. I, yeah, I'll, I'll. I don't know. I'll probably move home to like outside of Philly. Wow. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I like it up there. So Shane's Austin move was another great decision of his, and at the time he also released his second special, Beautiful Dogs, that Netflix actually bought. It's the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS. Trump comes out of the Situation Room at like midnight in the White House, and he walks down that fucking tunnel like he's and gives a press conference like he's giving a. Post game NBA just goes, Abu Bakar Al Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. <laughs> Shane was now more popular than ever. He overcame cancellation and made it back in the mainstream of comedy. But there was still one thing he was missing. Shane made many smart moves to reestablish himself, but what he did with Bud Light to get him what he was missing was definitely the most lucrative move he made. Bud Light found themselves in the exact same yet completely opposite situation to Shane back in 2019. Bud Light and Anheuser Busch have a terrific day. Bud Light were getting canceled by Kid Rock and other celebrities, and it wasn't for saying something considered to be racist or offensive. It was actually for being too woke. Bud Light's partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. This month I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever. Bud Light were in need of revival, and even though they announced a partnership with the UFC, they needed another boost. So Shane stepped up. 
He announced an official partnership with Bud Light on his Instagram, and the rest is history. You can have this ice cold bucket of Bud Light. All you have to do is confess. All right, I'll go first. Grease the wheels a little. What? No. I confess that I practice my halftime speeches in the shower before games. Professor Wilkins, you want to confess anything? No. All right, I'll go for you. Professor Wilkins has been taking karate classes ever since that saxophone girl put him in a headlock. <laughs> that was a secret. Now it's a beer. Bud Light came all the way back. UFC, Shane Gillis. Let's, let's go. go. Let's yeah. go. Let's fucking go. For the yeah. bros now. I mean, that's a good move. Like, that guy that we met, the CEO, yeah. he's, he's got it together. Yeah. He gets it. He gets it. I thought you were the Good CEO deal. now. I thought Just in commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you guys were going to fucking make fun of me. <laughs> no, Come on, man. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm no, it, could, it wouldn't have happened without this. Listen, I'm so yeah. happy. I'm so happy. They, they, it just made so much sense. You never let them go. You never bailed on them. Shane has made millions from his partnership and will continue to in the future. The fact that Joe mentioned meeting the Bud Light CEO as the guy we met shows how influential and powerful Joe is, and also highlights the significance of Shane's first JRE appearance. So by now, Shane has saved himself and his beloved beer company from cancellation, made millions in the process, and been seen on stage with some of the goats. But there was still one thing he didn't do after his SNL cancellation, but it finally happened in February 2024. Most of you probably have no idea who I am. Uh, I was actually, I was fired from this show uh, a while ago, but if, you know, don't look that up. Shane finally reappeared on SNL and completed the comeback after cancellation. Here, he displayed his great personality while still making references to being canceled. Oh, uh, where's my mom? I love my mom. She's so cool. One nut. You're like, when's that bitch gonna leave the house? <laughs> I have so much business to attend to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope I can say those words on TV. Uh... Not only did Shane use his cancellation to boost his career, but he used it to put himself in the history of comedy as the first comedian to flip a cancellation on its head. Never before has a comedian leaned into scrutiny so much and Uno reversed it. It's safe to say Shane changed comedy forever, as now other comedians can use his playbook to reverse a cancellation and make themselves an even bigger celebrity as well. Now Shane isn't the only comedian whose career has left a mark in comedy history. Click here to watch another comedian's great career journey.